Good evening, everybody. Um, so we're remembering why we moved it to 730. Because it is so hot. And you guys are sitting there looking into the sun. So my, I guess my recommendation is keep your cars turned on, the, end, the air conditioning nice and cool, pull your sun visors down, and um, we'll get through this. And um, just another month from now, we'll have a time change, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be fine soon, but today doesn't feel so fine. Again, um, for the sake of people watching on, on computer screens and things, um, I'm Pastor Mark Winkler. This is Emmaus Lutheran Church. Uh, this is Saturday, September 26th, and we're in Orange City, Florida. It's still 94 degrees outside, and, um, it, and we're feeling all of those 94 degrees. So welcome to our service. Welcome to your own computer screen if you're at home. We're really glad to be able to welcome people um, in both ways. We have more people tonight. This is the largest parking lot group that we've had. Uh, it looks like a used car lot, um, an unsuccessful used car lot where um, there are no cars being sold because the parking lot just looks wonderful. So glad to have all of you here. We are uh, regathering tomorrow for in-person worship at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, Wow, I mean, I could talk about that and the passionate conversations that we had leading up to that decision. Um, but for you, for now, this is the right place. We're really glad to have you here. When the time is right for you, uh, come and uh, come and worship with us on a Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. A couple of things you should know. Masks are to be worn all the time. We're practicing physical distancing. Um, we're not standing and singing. We're not standing at all. We're just keep, keep those aerosols down to a minimum. We're not coming forward for communion, but communion will be pretty much like it is for uh, the parking lot worship services. Uh, we're not passing an offering plate, but there'll be an opportunity for you to give an offering to the Lord. And so uh, those are some of the things that are going on. You're always welcome to join our Bible study tomorrow morning. Uh, it's at 11 o'clock. That's really ambitious. We have worship at 10. I'm hoping to be back home in DeLand at 11, but if it looks like I can't get there, I'll just lead it from the church here. But you can get the login information and the study guide by emailing uh, a request to s. B E E 47 at hotmail.com. S B E E 47 at hotmail.com. A lot of fun discussion goes on in that group, and we hope that you sometime take the opportunity to join us. Uh, you know what's going on in the world. Um, things, some things change quickly, and some things don't change quickly quickly and and we're part of all of it and we're all in this thing together um, we there are many concerns locally um, as in the state of Florida uh, nationally and on the world arena there are so many things for us to be aware of and to be prayerful of um, so um, all of the things that are going on, uh, invite you to keep your own prayers going and um, please join me in a word of prayer right now. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks that you have called us to this place this evening. We give you thanks for the beautiful day, the sunshine, the nice breeze that is blowing uh, and, and we give you thanks for, I'm saying it, air conditioned cars. We give you thanks, God, that your love surrounds us wherever we are and however we worship. We pray that you would be with us tomorrow morning as we open our doors and gather together for in-person worship. Lord, keep us safe, keep us vigilant, keep us humble in your presence. We pray for concerns that are going on locally, statewide, nationwide, and worldwide. All of those things that we see on the news and that trouble our hearts and 
and things that are on our minds and in our conversations with others. We pray that you would bring restfulness to a restless world. Help us to trust in your love and your mercy. Help us to, um, to listen to the word of scripture that teaches us to trust in you more than anything and above everything. We pray all of these things, God, as we as we turn our hearts to you now in worship and as we give thanks for the gift of your word and the gift of your son. We pray these things in his holy name. Amen. So I want to read to you from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching, and they said, By what authority are you doing these things that you do, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also, also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John the Baptist come from heaven? Or was it of human origin? Now they argued with one another and they said, well, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say it came from human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for everyone regards John as a prophet. And so they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said unto them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Jesus said, what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But later on, he changed his mind and he went to work. The father went to the second son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Now, which of the two did the will of the father? And they said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you. The tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let the people of God say together, Amen. Now, Charles Dickens wrote a book a long time ago. All of them were written a long time ago. It's called Great Expectations. And it's about a boy named Pip. It's a story of coming of age. And there are lots of themes in the, in the story love and rejection, good versus evil. There are um, stories of, of tragedy, of death and dying. There, part of the story focuses intently on money, on wealth. That's the reason I'm bringing it up right now. In fact, that's what the, the, the title refers to, Great Expectations. And the expectation was and understanding that wealth or money would be an important part of Pip's upbringing. That even though he was an orphan, he was sponsored as an apprentice. He was, he was paid, his way was paid to, um, to go to locations to work on jobs. There was always the expectation that when money was needed, money was gonna be there. Now I could, say that this is going to be now a stewardship sermon, but it's not. What it is, is a story of expectation where God, um, through his son, Jesus Christ, is, is putting before us a parable that shows a father with great expectation for his sons. Now, the reason he tells this parable is because Jesus has been just challenged by the chief priests and the elders of the people. And they come to Jesus and they say, 
Who gives you the authority to do these things that you are doing? Now, what's he doing except that he just rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and the people praised his name saying, um, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You, we know that Sunday, right? We call it Palm Sunday. And we know that when Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, on the colt, the foal of a donkey, that he's in his last week of life. And when he gets into Jerusalem, he heads for the temple. And what does he do when he gets to the temple? We find Jesus the angriest he has been in his whole ministry. And he goes to the temple and he sees money changers who are making a mockery out of his father's house. And he turns those money changers tables over and he chases them out. Now they were performing an important task so that the people who were traveling to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration, that they would have an opportunity to change their currency to the correct currency, or they would be able to buy unblemished offerings of, of um, sheep and doves, that they would be able to uh, purchase unblemished uh, offerings to offer to the Lord. It's tough to bring a sheep or a goat or a calf a long distance and have that offering not become blemished on the road. So these money changers were doing a good thing and they were providing uh, an important revenue for the temple, a revenue that would support the priest's work, a revenue that would be paid to the Roman occupied um, uh, governing body and it would um, it was a, an important revenue that was needed and Jesus kind of wrecked that by whose authority are you doing this they asked Jesus Jesus he answers their question with a question he says I'll answer your question if you answer my question he says you've heard of John the Baptist haven't you and they said yeah he says, whose authority did he have? Was his authority from God? Was his authority to baptize and, and preach, a, a, preach a message of repentance and forgiveness of sin? Did that message come from God? Or did human people give that to him? Well, they got together and they said, well, if we tell him that it came from God, he's going to say, then why didn't you believe it? Why didn't you respond to it? Why didn't you go to John the Baptist and confess your sins and repent and be baptized? Why didn't you listen to him? So we can't say it was from heaven. But we also can't say that it was from humans because if we do, we're afraid that the people will rise up against us and we can't have that happening either. We can't have people questioning our authority and the reason why they might rise up against the chief priests and the elders is because the people believed that John the Baptist spoke the word of the Lord by the authority of God himself. So they couldn't say it came from people because people knew it came from God and they would be mad at the chief priests and elders. Even though they had the answer that they wanted to give Jesus, they said, we don't know. And Jesus says, all right, I'm not going to tell you who gives me my authority either. And then he tells them this parable. That parable of the father with great expectations of his sons. He goes to the first son and he says, son, go work in the field. And he says, not going to do it. Not going to work in the field. It's hot. But later on, he changed his mind and he went and worked in the field. Jesus continues his story that he's telling to the chief priests and the elders. He said, then the man went to his second son and he said, son, go work in the field. And the son said, okay, I can do that. But then he didn't. Jesus says to the chief priests and the elders, which son did the will of the father? And they said, the first one did. They're only partially right. Because that first son said, not going to do it. And then he went and did it. 
That's not what the father wanted to hear. But the father heard what he wanted to hear from the second son. Sure, I can do that. But then he didn't. Neither one did what the father really wanted. The father wanted to hear somebody said, sure, I'll work. And then went to do the work. Neither one really pleased the father. Not completely. And Jesus says, you know what? Since you have answered that way, the tax collectors and the prostitutes, which is a euphemism for sinners, which is another euphemism for you and me. We're sinners. Jesus says those sinners are going to go into heaven before you are. You know why? It's because those tax collectors and, and prostitutes, those sinners, they heard John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness and they went to John and they saw of themselves, I can see how sinful I am. Those tax collectors and prostitutes, those people who are sinners, who looked at themselves and could easily see that they needed to repent and be baptized and be forgiven of their sins. They could easily recognize. And when John the Baptist invited them to confess their sins and repent of their sins and be washed clean in the water of baptism, they came. They came to John. They said yes. And they came. Those chief priests and elders, they said yes to God at the beginning. They knew maybe all their lives that they wanted to be people of faith who lived the faith right away from the first thing they knew about. They were saying yes to God, but when it came to the time of listening to John the Baptist preach a, a message of baptism for the forgiveness of sins and people's need to repent, they thought of themselves, well, that's good for those who need to repent, but I don't need to repent. And that's where they were wrong. Those tax collectors and prostitutes, those people who are sinners. Maybe we could say in some fundamental way at the beginning of their lives, they were saying no. They were saying no and living their lives for their own pleasure and their own purpose. But when they heard John preach the word of God, then they said yes. Those righteous, self-righteous chief priests and elders of the people they thought of themselves as being those who were not in need of repentance and forgiveness. They thought they did not need a baptism of John the Baptist, whoever he is. They're righteous on their own. So they said, no thanks. So Jesus says those people who recognize their need for transformation in their lives, they're going to go into the kingdom of heaven before you are. Now, I want to tell you about the process that we had for deciding to um, unlock the doors and open ourselves up for in-person worship. We were looking for a word of authority. We were looking for clear, clear information that we could trust and follow. Information that talked about the the um, infection rate for Volusia County and even specifically for Orange City and DeBerry and Deltona and DeLand. We were looking for that authority that would say to us, you can trust these numbers, but what can you trust these days? We came to those Zoom video conference meetings with lots of information and it didn't all agree with the information that another person at the meeting brought. Where do we go? Who do we trust? We had to decide and we took that step of faith. We had to come to a decision about when we were going to meet for in-person worship, we had to decide how we were going to go about doing that. What's the process? What, what are the directions that we give people as they arrive? Um, we, we had great ideas and we thumbed down several of those good ideas and we thumbed up several other good ideas and we have what we have. Those chief priests and elders were looking for 
confirmation of the authority of Jesus. By whose authority do you do the things that you do? Where do you get your information? Where do you get that power? We want to know that we can trust what you're saying, what you're doing. We want to know that when, when you bring us a message, that it's a message that holds true. That's what we're always searching for, truth. We want somebody to tell us the truth. We want to hear accurate information that we know guides our life, our faith, our purpose. We want to know that when we, um, when we are looking for truth, when we listen to voices of authority, that we're listening to someone who speaks truth to us. You know what? Here's probably the very best news of all. Jesus, he says to the, to the chief priests and the elders, he says, you know, those tax collectors and sinners, those, you know, those sinners are going to come into the kingdom of God before you. But you know what that means? It means that even the ones who are like the second son who said yes at the beginning. Yes, Lord, I'll turn my life over to you. Yes, I'll be a chief priest. Yes, I'll become an elder of the people. Yes, I will lead people's religious thinking and, and guide their lives. But no, I won't believe John the Baptist. I won't believe authority that's not my own is probably what they were thinking and living out. <coughs> but even those people who said yes and then didn't follow through, Jesus opened the door for them too. Jesus, he opened the door and he said, everyone is going to come in. Those sinners are going to come in first and you're going to come in behind them. That's the good news that Jesus has a bigger picture in mind. And our great expectations tonight can be this, that Jesus Christ invites us to recognize the sinfulness in our lives, that Jesus w invites us to confess our sins and to return to him in hope, in love, in praise, in prayer, in thanksgiving. And that with great expectation, we can recognize our place in the kingdom of God. I don't care who comes in first or second or last. I just want us all to be there. We're all in this thing together. This thing called humankind. We're all in this thing together called hope and expectation. We are all in this thing together, looking for truth, trusting in God, hoping for the best. And Jesus tells us tonight, we're all coming in. All are welcome. All are welcome through Jesus Christ and his grace and his love for us. Amen. Please join me in a word of prayer and um, at this point, you're probably going to want to have your um, your communion wafer because um, that's what this prayer leads to. Let us pray. Faithful God, you have provided all that we need. You speak truth to us. You give us a word of truth, the Bible. You give us hope. You give us more than we need, more than we can ask for, more than we can expect. And yet we do have great expectations, Lord. We sit here today, either in our cars or we're going to sit in front of a computer screen. And we're going to sit with great expectations at this assurance that each of us will come to you in your kingdom. We give you thanks, God, that you have made a way possible for each of us to join you. We recognize our own sinfulness and we confess before you in our own thoughts, our own private thoughts. We confess before you our need to repent and to receive forgiveness. We repent of the things that we've done wrong and said wrong and thought wrong. They hurt other people and they hurt us. We confess to you the things that we didn't say and didn't do and didn't think about that would have made a positive difference for somebody who is vulnerable or in need. Those hurt people too. They hurt us too. We confess the things that would be all of our shortcomings, all of the ways we've disappointed you and others and ourselves. 
And we lift those up to you, God, knowing that your shoulders are big enough to carry the weight of our sinfulness and the weight of the whole world upon your shoulders all at the same time. We ask you, God, to forgive us. We ask you to lighten our hearts, ease our burden, that you would help us to continue our journey in life with the hope and the great expectation that belongs to those who trust your word. And now, God, we give you thanks for the gift of your son, Jesus, for in his living and in his dying and in his rising, he gives us the gift of his body to eat. And as we eat of his body, we remember all that he has done for us. When we eat of his body, we take part in the sacrifice that he made for us. And so, Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of your son, for his body that was given for you, for each you that's out there, for each one of us who has been promised our place in the kingdom of heaven. It's for me. It's for you. We ask you, God, to bless us now as we share in communion, feasting on the body of your son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of our sins. And we, pr we pray all of these things through your son, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. God's people say together, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.